Welcome, cycling fans. I hope you've been enjoying all the amazing guests that I've been bringing you on the podcast to date. And before we get started, I want to share with you an amazing way that you can coach with me this winter. So if you've been liking all my coaching segments, you're going to love this program. So it's my 16 week online winter road cycling training program. Say that 10 times fast. So I've been doing this program for over 15 years. It's been usually local, but now it's online, which is even more amazing because I can impact more cyclists this way than in studio. The way it works is you're going to learn valuable cycling skills, such as have you ever asked yourself, first of all, how can I become a smoother, create a more smooth pedal stroke? Like, what are the four quadrants all these people have been talking about? And how can I get stronger on the hills? So here's the thing. It really comes down to the fundamentals and the basics skills of cycling, which when you get on your bike, you have nothing, you know nothing about. Now this is that, and that's what I'm going to drill into you over 16 weeks. So when you finish, you are going to know how to create a smooth pedal stroke and be more efficient. You're going to be climbing hills with much better technique. You're going to be building your sprint base and your endurance base is going to be much stronger. Now I have a special code for you. It's podcast in all uppercase to get $50 off either the VIP or the basic program. Now go to this website to check out what the differences are. Uh, Basically, the VIP is a much greater coaching program. So if you want more personalized coaching, goal setting, and we have a reported five to 20% increase in fitness. Can you imagine starting your spring with that kind of increase based on last year? So it's 16wkroadcycling.ca. So that's 16wkroadcycling.ca and use the code podcast to get $50 off. And if you have questions, just email me. I love to answer them. And I hope and look forward to coaching you to become better on the bike. I hope you enjoy the next episode. Have an amazing day. All right, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode of Secrets from the Saddle, all things cycling podcast with your host, Sylvie Daou and good friend of mine, Nick Van Hooften. Obviously not that good, Nick Van Heften, but that's okay. Heften, I was getting close. And so Nick and I go back a long way. I asked him to be a guest on the podcast because we have multiple things in common with regards to cycling. Not only um, do I know him because I used to race against his wife, Judith Hayes, (laughs) <laughs> long time ago, like 10 years ago, uh, we were competitors on the sidelines. So that's how I got to know Nick. But now also both of them participate in our club, Cycle Fit Chicks, my club's time trial here in our region. And also he is an event organizer and he's been just in the scene for almost a decade. I almost say decades because <laughs> we both have been in for decades. <sighs> So before I bring Nick out, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background of him. He's been an avid cyclist since 2009. Really? It's not been longer than that? Oh, yes. Show off your shirt. That's right. Yeah. Um, and he got into the sport after his wife, Judith, uh, three-time national champion and five-time provincial TT champion, took up the sport. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I got into cycling 2005, racing. So she must came on the scene. So Nick had a success as uh, very successful um, uh, amateur sailing career, racing fireballs. Oh, that's cool. I have to talk about that. Um, and uh, Taser 22s, 420s, J24. So I assuming if anybody is a sailor who's listening, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't. Um, and sharks. So. <laughs> I don't see any lasers in there. I know what a laser is. <laughs> um, Nick is part of Montreal team that has consistently on the podium and won provincial. So this is his sailing. Um, he moved into time trials um, where he now uh, organizes um, his uh, sort of like 
well, it's a Saturday time trial series in Montreal. And it's more of a training series race, but we're going to talk about that. So I just want to bring, um, you know, Nick out. He's going to tell you more about his story, but Nick, I'm so excited to have you here. Well, thank you, Sylvia. It's great to be here. Um, and first of all, before we do anything else, uh, you know, huge palmares to you and the, the CycleFit Chicks crew for the Wakefield Chelsea time trials. Um, you know, it was so great to have it back on the calendar this year. Awesome that it's part of the FQSC series, which means, of course, you know, I, if I look at it in my category, Stefan de Maers travels from Tetford Mines, Quebec, which, yeah, to come and do your time trial and kick all our asses. But I mean, it... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, it's, the reputation is growing every year. Um, your gang does an awesome job. We know it's all volunteers, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, we've really, really enjoyed that. I don't necessarily enjoy the hills. I mean, fortunately, I, I guess your audience <laughs> can only see me from here up. It only gets bigger. Um, I'm like the world's biggest jockey and in this case, cyclists. And so Sylvie's time trials, of course, are on the, the bumps of uh, Wakefield Chelsea, let's call it. Um, but it finishes with what, about a 12, 12 degree climb, I guess, on that last little punch. Is that so, it? Is it 12 degrees? I thought it was like it's 35. A tough one. Yeah, like it, I mean, it's, if you're not geared up properly, it can be a real kick in the feet. And I mean, finish. well, that's it. And for, I mean, I have a 56 chain ring in the front, so I also have to be super careful with the gearing. Otherwise I just come mm. to a stop, but yeah. So again, congratulations to you and the gang. I mean, it was, it was once again, a, a great day. Um, temperature was a little, little, a, a smidge cooler than last year because the, our 2019, God, do you I guess. remember that? I just remember it. Like... I nearly passed out. Oh. <laughs> I mean, and I do have to apologize. I was so tapped. First of all, I did not think I'd be on the podium, but um, I was so exhausted after this year's. I got into my, like I changed and sort of staggered over to take pictures of the winners. And then of course, call out my name. I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, apologies have for not wearing your jersey on. <laughs> oh, I was, yeah, I'd been swimming. It was, it was a hot, it was a hot event, but uh, yeah, it was. yeah that one as was always, it was great. Event. Only disappointment. No room at Les Forges for, for, for lunch. I mean, that was, uh, <laughs> however, I can probably miss a lunch Next time, just the reserve. It, yeah, well, I mean, that's it, right? Well, hopefully by next time, the whole full dining room, everything else will be open. But yes, it's well, always... next year is hopefully going to be different. I'm hoping to add and um, funny, like before we get, like I always ask Nick, like people, how you got into cycling, but just to add on to what you're talking about is um, I put out, remember we we're talking about collaboration. So I did put it out in the final email and I had somebody reach out. So uh -huh. we're going to see where that goes because, and I've already, I took the liberty of uh, reaching out to the municipalities that I work with and asking them if it would be possible to extend and do other like uh multiple events on that one weekend so it might just turn into a stage race that you know the fqsc is just gonna have to look at and um not put another event on the damn weekend <laughs> well it's, i i would say get it in early but they seem to do whatever the hell they want anyway so it, yes uh, all you can do is i mean like i said you've built a reputation i think uh uh, if you build it, they will come is probably the best, best thing I could say. And we will definitely. So, I mean, it, uh, yeah, no, always. Enjoy. All right. Excellent. Okay. So before, okay, let's just get into, uh, Nick, how did you get into cycling way back when I know with you oh, well. said that, you know, Judith had a, uh, you know, a role in that. So let's hear it from you. Most definitely. Well, the most, probably one of the most traumatic experiences of my life was buying my first road bike, but that would have been. <laughs> 1972 you're trying to convince your father why you need a, a road bike as opposed to getting you know a sit up and beg mary poppins bike which he thought would be just fine you know a three speed get you back here and there and there was no logical answer for a 12 year old to say why you need a racing bike at that age right you know because everyone else has one just wasn't cutting it so that was my introduction to cycling having borrowed um my sister's bikes for many, many years before that when I was a little kid. Anyways, fast forward, um, I started racing sailboats when I was seven and 
raced competitively and that kind of took up everything. I also played pretty much every sport where if you could knock down your opponent, that usually gave me a good advantage. So I played football, I played rugby, I played soccer, I played all, of, which were all fairly time consuming as well. Cycling was a way to get from point A to point B. Um, Judith, my wife, uh, decided in 2008 that she should do something. She'd never done competitive sports. She'd never done anything competitive in any way. Um, and so she joined the Beaconsfield Cycling Club, looked around, a smidgen different, took all the maps, because in those days you still had printed maps, um, and started cycling and found a couple of friends who she started cycling with. And um, that was her first year. I ended up going to the closing dinner for the club, met some people there, sort of saw they all didn't have two heads and five eyes and thought, okay, these are nice people and really wanted to do something. I've always raced, I've had the same racing team in, sail, in sailing. I, I, my partner and I had been together for actually as long as Judith and I had been together. So we'd, we'd raced as a team for like 27 years back then. Um, and so I said, all right, I'll pick up this cycling thing. And Judith's first road bike we bought from a shop and I got to know the owner quite well because he was close to where I was working. So I would bring Judith's bike in and he said to me, oh, you know, you don't ride, you don't do this. And so as the great story goes, he uh, was going to inter he was going to, I guess, Vegas for Interbike. And he said, hey, do you want to borrow my bike? And we were the same size, same leg length, same everything else. So I'd been riding what I realized was probably like a 45 pound mountain bike. Um, and then suddenly got on this carbon bike and it was like getting onto a rocket ship. So that was fun. <laughs> Gave him back his bike, went back to my bike. And Judith was still doing her thing. And then um, he said, I'm actually going to Germany for the big interbike show. Do you want to borrow the bike again? And uh, I'm a salesman by career profession. So I said to him, I don't understand why you're riding an old bike. When if I owned a bike shop, I'd be riding the newest piece of equipment every year to try and promote it. And he looks at me and goes, oh. so anyways, came back and he goes, so. <laughs> he didn't give you a little like, but the steel is better. Well, I mean, and well, no, I was saying he should be riding a new bike. I was more than happy to ride his old bike. And so when he came back from Interbike, he said to me, so were you thinking about buying this bike? And I go, well, if the price is right for this old bike we've both established. So that was my first Trek Pilot 5.2 with uh, it had like a suspension thing on the back. Um, but that's what I bought. It was awesome. And I always remember because people still get baffled. He goes, uh, great, I just have to take off the pedals. I look at it. Go, <laughs> Sorry, it, you don't get the saddle either. Well, well, I said, well, I just looked at him and said, well, is it a magic bike? Do I not need pedals? He goes, well, they go with the shoes. And of course, he and I were the same shoe size as well, right? So I looked at him. He goes, you want my shoes as well? So yeah, I bought everything. But, uh, <laughs> So that was like, my can first... I just take your jersey and? <laughs> oh no, no, there was yeah. I would have needed three of his jerseys and sewn them together to fit me. So that wasn't going to be in the cards. But, uh, but yeah. So that was um, you know big shout out to um, Cyclo Robert in LaSalle. That was where we bought our first bikes. Um, and so yeah, uh, we started. I started doing some casual riding. Um, you know, we joined the Beaconsfield Club. Judith rode with her fast people, and I rode with my nice people. And and uh, that was. <laughs> my first season of, of riding. So I learned how to ride. I had uh, a couple of actually uh, former uh, short track Olympian, um, Natalie Charret and her husband helped me learn how to ride in a pack. Um, Bernard was awesome, um, learning how to Peloton ride, touching elbows. Basically we'd ride for like 20 kilometers touching elbows. So that was a tremendous help. And then um, I'm not sure if you remember Denis Manta, but Denis Manta, raced for VCOM, uh, the, actually the team that Judith and I race for now. Oh, and he Denis. raced, yeah. He I raced, love that team. Yeah, he raced for, v, yeah. he raced for Rio Tinto as well afterwards. Yeah. And he's a Power Watts coach now in Montreal. But uh, he and Suzanne, his partner at that time, um, basically ran the Beaconsfield time trials. And they said, oh, you know, you should come and check it out. And so that's how our time trialing career started. Um, so we started time trialing and very quickly I realized my bike probably wasn't optimal for time trialing, but because you're racing against the clock and against yourself, it really didn't matter. And I would say to people, once you start time trialing for the next three years, every time you do one, you'll be better, faster, stronger, just because there's a constant learning curve. And so, yeah, we started- The uh, wind my... is in a different direction. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a, 
Well, wind isn't, for if you're my size, wind isn't such a big deal. It definitely Never affects right. smaller people, but I mean, it. Uh, yeah, so we started doing time trials um, where we still hold them now. Although the first time trial I ever did was a 34K team time trial out in uh, St. Justin de Newton, which actually Beacon, uh, Beaconsfield used to host and Ottawa would come down and participate in. Um, but uh, yeah, so I crashed my first time trial. Um, I'd never done a high speed left turn just because you don't, right? Because you're crossing traffic. But the first turn was a left turn and it wasn't a, it wasn't a bank turn. So I was on a borrowed Look 585 with Campagnola gears, which I'd never used before. And my teammate, I just, as I realized I was gonna be crashing into the bull rushes, I just yelled at her, keep going, I'll catch up. And so that was my first time trial experience. Yeah, Judith and her partner won, by the way, because she wouldn't ride with me because I was too slow. But um, yeah, so we uh, so fast forward to the next year, we started doing time trials on the Voie Maritim, um, which is where we're going to be hosting you guys this Saturday. Um, yeah, and 15K time trials, uh, seven and a half K out and back. And like I said, it was, I was sort of, um, I guess, one of the uh, more famous, um, certainly in the cycling community these days, uh, Sylvan Adams, um, owner of Israel Startup Nation. Um, you'll see his name on the velodrome they're building in Bromal. You'll see his name in the velodrome in Tel Aviv. You'll see his name on the, actually on the YMHA that uh, Georges St. Pierre learned his trade at. Um, yeah, small side note there. They have an incredible wrestling program. But um, so Sylvan has had a huge influence on cycling globally. Uh, but obviously here in Montreal, he was my measure. He's a couple of years older than me. And he was five minutes faster than me on my first time trial, which is pretty horrible when you think it was 15K. But five minutes. <laughs> well, yeah. but on the other hand, he was already, I think, a Pan Am Games world champion, right, Macca right, right, Games right. champion. So I'm going, he can't get he can't any better. Compare. Well, he can't yeah. get any better. <laughs> And I can't get any worse. So, I mean, so yeah, we've, we've narrowed the gap. He can still kick my butt, but we've narrowed the gap. But I mean, it, uh, yeah, so that was the introduction to time trialing for, for us. Um, Judith took to it like a duck to water. Like I said, she hadn't done much competitive sports and even the cycling part of it for her. She was actually the previous uh, spring, she started training for the Ottawa Marathon. Um, and she ran a half marathon here in Montreal on St. Patrick's Day in the snow. And, um, I was, I teach, I, I uh, host spinning classes, I guess, as, as well as doing some other cycling coaching. But um, so I'd come from the class and I was waiting for her to cross the finish line and she crossed the finish line and was getting her chicken soup or whatever it was. And they're going, Judith Hayes, Judith Hayes. And I go, oh, sweetie, did you lose your bag or something? And yeah, no, she finished second. Um, so yeah, she ran a pretty blistering pace, but it was too hard on her ankles and shin splints and everything else. And so that's when she started racing bicycles. So yeah, I mean, it, uh, I think the first race she did was probably Granby of that year. And then we hit a series of Granby time trial, another excellent one to do. Uh, looking forward to it again next year. Super well organized. Um, again, I'm not sure. this year, did they? No, it was it was because traditionally it was, in the, um, it was it's in that one of the early kind of ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it. Uh, but Contra Cur picked up the picked up the uh, the slack there, and uh, les, din les dynamiques de Contra Cur, probably the most amazing cycling club in Quebec, for my in my opinion. Uh, excellent youth program. Excellent. To be fair, the program out in Vaudreuil for youth is also awesome. Um, but um, they run a series of awesome events. Um, they run time trials during the summer in the evenings. Uh, this year they ran um, a road race uh, and they ran a time trial. Um, so, and like I said, I mean, they go from, uh, I mean, I've been at a time trial event where I think the youngest was probably eight and the oldest was 85. I mean, it just, uh, yeah, it's a really great community. The mayor usually comes out, yells at you in a good way. Um, but yeah, so, you know, kudos to them, but I mean, and they've also started coming to the Voie Maritime, actually. It's worth their, their while to come out. But yeah, so essentially, you know, why am I suddenly an event manager for cycling? Well, I used to organize a lot of sailing venues and sailing events and stuff. So it's kind of been a history of that. Um, in 2014, um, the, the cycling club I belonged to decided that it wasn't um, something they wanted to continue to pursue. 
which was sad because we had about 100 members that joined just for time trial. But again, I mean, it's people do what they want to do and we didn't want it to drop. So thanks to, I guess, the number of amazing volunteers and the folks at Rossi Cycle and Lachine, um, we were able to keep it going. Um, so Owen, Owen Eastman and, and family, honestly, because his dad, who's now also in his mid eighties, has been doing the time trials for years. Um, they stepped up and said, yeah, we'll, we'll give you guys a hand with it. And so, um, Again, just a team of volunteers. We try to run. This year, we're a little bit light. I think we're doing five or six of them. We wait till the FSQC calendar comes out and then try and slot them in where they fit, um, you know, so that people can use it as training. Not that everyone who races F, uh, FQSC um, does these time trials and vice versa. A lot of people just want to test themselves. And that's why it's great of course. as well. Yeah. Because sometimes, I mean, you know, even here, like we... I think the OBC has been able to bring back their time trial, which was a big um, location for a lot of us to go out and test ourselves on a weekly basis or bi-weekly. And, um, and then we, we lost our crit course, you wow. know, and that was a big, um, you know, Tuesday night crits, which is, you know, a lot of us went out there to train on that. And I, I feel like that was a huge a huge loss. I mean, they did move them to Ottawa, which was nice because I used to have them like way out and I was like, forget it. Um, and, uh, but the course and the location is completely under construction this year, which uh, is of course. pretty shitty, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, these training courses are so important for the development of, um, you know, athletes in getting up, you know, a, testing themselves, B, you know, putting in strategy, trying different things, like every time they go out, like it's not always a race, like, you know, I always, you always go out with like some sort of um, goal, like training goal, like this is what you're going to try, worked, didn't work, go back to the drawing board, you know, come back next week or two weeks and try something new. Um, and I think like, for, you know, they're just really, really important to develop as uh as athletes and, and uh it's hard when they disappear so well it's funny so kudos even, to you well it's for me it's a lot of the little things that make such a difference if you've never had someone hold you and i mean it sounds and i don't mean hold you but if you've <laughs> never had someone, time trials here yeah. everybody so <laughs> yes welcome and to the do. evening portion yes it uh <laughs> but yes but honestly if you've never had someone say okay and you're looking at them going okay what and they expect you to clip in and you're sort of going, I don't know you from Adam and somehow I'm going to let you balance me on a bike. It can be very intimidating. So it's a much, you know, first of all, people look at me and go, yeah, you could probably pick me up and hold me over your head. So <laughs> there's the confidence in the fact that, you know, I won't be dropping you. Um, but the other thing is, if you're not used to it and just some little things, are you in the right gear? I mean, I look down, and I'm sort of going, okay, yeah, that, you've got a minute a and a half, yeah. <laughs> get off your bike and let's spin you up a little bit so that That'd you're going to have great. a decent acceleration. Um, you know, put on the brakes, you'll have more stability if you have your brakes on when you're in the blocks kind of thing. Um, just little things like that, better to do it in a sort of, um, you know, in an atmosphere where there is a fair amount of, of guidance and coaching available as opposed to you're on the start line of a, you know, for, for what we would consider to be a big race. Um, you know, the first time that, um, you know, we did the provincials, I'd never been on a ramp before, <laughs> you know, and suddenly oh, you're, yeah, you're climbing another, into a box. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, so yeah, there are all these things that if you can, if you can simulate them in any way, but I mean, it, uh, you know, so it's, and again, it's getting comfort. I mean, we've run two, this will be the third one on, on Saturday. And this year, the first time the guy came out, he said, no, 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 I, I, I've never had anyone. So I said, good, do it. You know, so he did it clipping it himself and off he went. I said, you want to save seven seconds? I said, come over yeah, here and we'll work, on you. we'll work on you clipping in so he looks at me i go just get on your bike and i said clip in and i'll trust hold you. me let's go yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean that's you know and, and people learn that learning how to do a turnaround i mean it's a wide enough path on the voie maritime but you still need to understand okay how do i you know how do i do it okay wide and tight the way to go you know, nice and wide at the beginning tight around the cone is the way you're going to keep the maximum amount of speed you don't know it until you've done it a few times and even if someone tells you what to do until you've done it you really don't get that feeling for it. Understanding wind. I mean, that's, I think my sailing careers helped me in that regard. I always look to see where the wind is. I always want to know what the wind direction is. Drives Judith crazy. I always have the direction, like on my Garmin, I always know, am I going south? Am I going east? Am I going west? Because I want to know where the wind is. 
because it makes such a massive difference. You know, you look down, you say, oh my God, I'm putting out 600 watts and I'm going 31 kilometers an hour. And then you go, oh yeah, there's a 20 kilometer an hour headwind blowing me backwards. <laughs> and equally, I mean, you've done Gramby before. When you're on that back stretch of Gramby, you look down and say, I'm going 60, I'm a god. And then you I go, know, eh? that's yeah. like, this is where you're going to make up all the, yeah. the lost time you're going to lose on <laughs> And then someone else is doing like 50 watts more than you because it's a tailwind blows through you, right? So, I mean, yeah, thank you, Henry Tambor. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so That's I mean, it's, yeah. it, it really is, you know, uh, I use these sessions for constantly testing things. You know, I always sort of laugh and say that my time trials are broken into three parts. And that part where you come out of the gates and you're too excited. And so you absolutely overcook. And then you have the second, third where you're like, oh my God, I'm never going to finish. And then you have the last piece where you're going, <laughs> I know where I am. I know I'm not going to die. I can finish it. And for yeah. me, it's trying to figure out a way to make that middle part better, you know, so it, it uh, without trying to impact too much on parts, you know, one and three. And that's just constantly doing it. The other thing is if you're using a time trial bike and you don't have to, but, you know, I was saying it's always incremental gains. So you can, you can do it on a unicycle for the first, you know, year. I don't recommend it, but on whatever bike you have, you'll still get better each time just because you're learning. And at some point you'll go, well, maybe I'll get dishier wheels. And you pick up 20 seconds because oh, you have better skin wheels. Skin suit. Well, that's it. So, and then the helmet. And then you go, I should probably get a time trial bike. And suddenly you've made that, you know, and then you go, well, if 404s were great, 1080s are better and a disc is even better. And yeah, so it, uh, the nice part about time Like, trials, let's look at the wind. Well. <laughs> you might not want to bring that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the nice part about time trial equipment is it generally doesn't take too much of a battering. It's not like you're going to be in a 20 bike pileup in a crit or something. Um, and you pull it out. Yeah. I mean, I use mine a lot for training just because I enjoy riding it. But the reality is, is I believe my time trial bike is probably eight, eight years old or something, but I don't use very many gears. So whether it was a 10 speed, 11 speed or a 12 speed, I have a very small range of gears that I use. So it's been fine. I mean, it's, you just make sure you keep the equipment in good shape. You know what I did? I um, I, I don't know. I don't know of anybody who's done this, but I had a road bike that I absolutely loved. It was my second one. It's my Orbea Orca, and it's actually lighter than my Specialized. And um, and I converted her because she's a she to a time trial bike, and it's amazing because I loved racing on that bike. First of all, like I did a lot of my my uh first years of racing on her and um and just as a time trial bike she's just amazing and it's just it's swapping out the the handlebars right get the brakes the gears the handlebars and if you have a, a bike that is good for and light and you've maybe used it for racing or maybe you haven't and you want a time trial bike hey 600 bucks, you can have a time trial bike. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Saddle position is important as well, like mm -hmm. super important. But yeah, it's, you know, I always say to people, time trialing is the intersection between arrow and pain. Um, and that's basically, <laughs> you know, it's because the arrow <laughs> position is not a, a totally natural position. And uh, holding it like that, I mean, if you're, if you're my size, they say I just became bigger. Um, it's a question of, are you closing the gap and so you're sort of like and now i can't breathe because i'm you know caving in my ribs or am i open and then now i'm like a big sail and so of course i'm slowing things down so it's the ability to be able to figure out where that is um and then just the ability to quite honestly just ride through the pain because you know there i mean the longest time trial i've ever done what were the obc ones the 40k down oh uh, yeah, south yeah, of Carl's yeah. place yeah, I mean, which I loved. I mean, that was a, an amazing course where it's like one, two percent little bumps here and there. And I mean, it uh, held out. And it's is it? It's either it, it's south of Carlton Place, but not far from there. And yeah, totally uh, uh, deserted roads. Um, I think I told you that story. Yeah, that's those are nice. I got to the turnaround, and this is the first time I'd been at the OBC thing, and I thought, well. There's a guy sitting in a deck chair by the side of the road. That was nothing. That just that, so I look and, and <laughs> waving a flag. Right well, he was board. he was just sort of sitting there casually, and and so I looked, and there were some cars coming, and I thought, okay, what do I do? Do I be like a total jerk and you know cut in front of the cars? So instead, I came to a pretty much almost a dead stop and looked at him and said, "Are you serving sandwiches?" And of course, he looks at me like, "What? No, go, go, go!" So, but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we enjoyed those a lot. The roads are well. Quite honestly, 
they are not Quebec roads, so super smooth. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. We were hoping we can get back to those as well. But you know, the calendar keeps filling up as well. I mean, with all sorts of different races. But uh, yeah. So hey, but, how when did, how long have you been running your time trial there? So again, Beaconsfield had a history of it, but so 2014 is when the Montreal Time Trial Association actually started. So yeah, oh, I guess seven oh, okay. years. Yeah. So it's before that, like I said, I mean, I, we started, Judith and I started time trialing in 2010 and it was a bit hit and miss before that. And in fact, before they developed the West Island, the way they have of Montreal, um, they used to hold them, uh, believe it or not, Geneviève Janssen was doing them back in long before we knew people rode bicycles, but um, on, a, on a strip called Lance Alorme, which is kind of the northern part of the West Island in the Kirkland area, uh, Kirkland, oh, Centerville, okay. that area. Um, so yeah, along so the water. They, um, mm -hmm. It's actually so it was a road that would cut. If you think about where the forty is or the Trans Canada, so basically from from the water, the North Shore, um, there's a road that basically goes along, uh, has a nice shoulder, and so and of course there were a lot less people living there in those days, so it was a good place to do to do to to do riding, and then. Uh, the club also used to run a lot of stuff, like I said, in St. Justin de Newton and that whole area just before the Ontario border. You know, it, um, yeah. yeah, but the Voie Maritime stuff has been realistically since about 2009, it's been a regular feature anywhere from um, six to nine uh, Saturdays. And then we introduced the hill climb at Camellia Hood uh, in the fall, typically. Um, so there it's a one-way hill climb and it's basically the same climb it's one of the climbs that they do for the Grand Prix de Montréal when they have the pros come in so it uh and we we actually have the up same mount record royal. holder yeah up mount royal so in both cases um james piccoli who rides for israel startup nation now um he has the record for the wa Tim, and he actually has the record um for uh, camellia hood as well and both on Strava and with the Montreal Time Trial Association. So that's kind of fun. So tell me, you you followed Judith around. So we're going to talk about Nick the Sherpa. <laughs> and now, because like, like, as I go back, this is how I met Nick and Judith. Uh, when I started my racing, uh, she was one of the ladies that um, I competed against. And of course, Nick was always there. Um, helping on the sidelines and you guys have done a fair amount of traveling uh, for competitions and um, and we're actually we'll have to have Judith on here telling her story as well but um, why didn't I think about her we have to book her after this um, and uh, so so tell me a little bit about like just being the supportive husband well I mean it it's one of those things where <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's tough to do uh, for me. And I mean, I would sort of look at, I mean, <laughs> not that I was married to my partner when I was sailing, I'm sure he'd have some issues with that. But, um, the, you know, the reality is, is that I've always said you can beat half your competition before you even show up, if you're well prepared. And I mean, it's the same thing for sailing as it is for cycling. Make sure the bike is ready. Make sure all your equipment is ready. Check out the course ahead of time. I mean, as you know, if you're racing in Quebec, probably the biggest thing you can do to give yourself a competitive advantage is go and have a look at the course just to know where the potholes are. I mean, it makes such a difference in our province, of course. Um, but understanding where the course is, understanding where the hills are, understanding where the breaks may come and so on. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it could be any kind of competitive event. It happens to be cycling, but making sure that the equipment's all okay. Um, in time trialing, critical that you make sure the bike measures in. You know, it's, there's, there's nothing worse than you show up on the start line and I've seen it so many times where someone shows up and they look at them and go, yeah, you have to move your saddle three centimeters or three millimeters or, you know, your bars are too long. Well, you know, again, I can probably fit a hacksaw on my back pocket, but most cyclists are much tinier and can't. And of course, the last thing you need is that kind of stress. So even, you know, when, you know, they've had the nationals a number of times in the, in the Quebec region for the last few years, Lac Megantic and a few other places. And we'd make sure I'd measure her bike in on the Friday night before. And I'd make sure I'd look at the official and say, are you doing the women's time trial tomorrow? And what's your name? <laughs> and, and just so that if there was any issue the next day, I would just, uh, once we had that where they said, oh no, you know, the, the angle of the seat has to be changed. And so I just spun over to him and said, 
I haven't touched the bike since last night. And he looks at me and goes, so he said, let me measure it. And he goes, yeah, it's fine. Away we go. Because the last thing you want, you've got your competitor, in this case, Judith, what needs to focus on the race, needs to focus on her preparedness, needs to you know be totally in the zone. So having external forces like that, you know, sort of uh, affecting you can can be pretty traumatic. We were we were up at I guess Blue Mountain doing the um, that was where they used when they had the uh, the world time well I guess what do they call it the world I'm blanking on it now Bruce Bird used to organize these events all the time and it was in order to be able to compete at the world masters level you had to go and win and a guy knocked over Judas bike 10 minutes before it was sitting on a stand knocked it over and bent the derailleur yeah so oh my gosh no yeah oh, so i just said go sit down i'll go take care of it and so i took it over to uh, one of the on-site mechanics and we fixed the derailleur pretty much i just prayed she wouldn't like go extreme with the gears at the high at the you know highest end and I knew it was a relatively it wasn't too bumpy, of course, so she wouldn't be in the super high gears, and you know everything worked out just fine. But uh, she got lost three times. But um, <laughs> well, yeah. Was, so yeah, just to it, let everybody know that um, when you time trial and you go to an official course or race or UCI, um, your time trial bike it's not like a triathlon. Anything goes for a triathlon when you get into high level uh, racing or even. Um, uh, you know, sanctioned um, provincial races, not provincial, but like um, regional, anyway, sanctioned races, your bike has to be compliant to this certain standard. And that means like the saddle has to be a certain position over the crank and the handlebars and everything. So if you show up with a time trial bike, you are going to be in big trouble because everything is like super uh tight and um and then you are forced to move it if you want to participate so you know um always looking at your tech guide and making sure you drop the plumb line from your seat down to see where everything is is lying is very important in road racing so that's where you know nick was talking about that um your time trial bike specifically has to be set up a certain way so everybody is riding with the same you know the same type of setup and so. 90 99 percent of road bikes will measure in every time so i think it's yeah it's, i mean it's like never, yeah i mean it's yeah. rarely an issue i mean that's uh you know and 100 percent of whatever you're on will measure in the mtta because all we do is look at you and go yeah okay so long as you have a break um you're good so it, uh, your MTTA, that's the Mount, uh, Montreal. Montreal Time Trial Association. What you oh, guys right. will be doing on Saturday. Yeah. So it, uh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. There's, there, there's, there's no measuring. So if anyone says they want to measure you, they're not part of my group and I'd stay away from them. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it, uh, yeah, no, no, it's, uh, and, but, and, uh, are, is, uh, I guess yours isn't part of the ACVQ series. No, definitely not. I mean, it, um, you know, it's one of the things we're just trying to encourage people to test and perform themselves, uh, you know, and, and inc increase their performance levels. Um, so no, I mean, it's hardly cost prohibitive for people who are spending thousands on bicycles, but not everyone wants to, you know, if you're only doing the, uh, the Montreal Time Trial Association time trials, paying 165 bucks for license and then, you know, paying for whatever it is for the events. So, oh, okay. So that's yeah. why you don't have to have a race license. Yeah. Okay. No, no. This oh, is like really, that. like I said, this is, this is really, it's uh, hopefully all racing is fun, but this is definitely, um, you know, the focus is on your performance. Of course, as soon as you've done like two time trials, you look and see, you know, who's the person who's three seconds behind me and who's the person who's three seconds ahead of me. And, and, you know, what, what can I do? And that's when you, first buy your arrow socks or something just to grab those seconds but yeah i mean it's you know it it, it it's, it's it becomes a very personal level of competition um because you're looking to improve yourself but you're also kind of looking to see you know who's who am i close to and what do i need to be able to do and how did they suddenly become two minutes faster than me oh they bought a new bike i guess i need one too yeah no i'm kidding but, uh, but uh, don't do that yes. <laughs> modify your bike like i did and we'll see yeah. how i do well, I mean, the, the thing is, it is all about incremental gains. So, I mean, always leave yourself a little bit of an opening. That's what I say. I mean, we did exactly, I did the same thing as you. The first thing I did was, so I had my old Trek Pilot 5.2. 
and I bought, you know, for whatever second hand for like fifty bucks, I Put bought arrow bars. bars on. Yeah, there. exactly. And then suddenly, it. it modifies your position, and suddenly you're going, oh, look at that! Just by being a little bit more arrow on the bike, I'm going three kilometers an hour faster, putting out exactly the same effort. You know, so it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you got your time trial series, Nick. Now, one, a couple of questions. Are you going to be adding to that? Or are you going to go bigger? Or are you just going to stick managing that and making sure it's always on the calendar for um, anybody who wants to, you know, go out for a practice ride on Saturday mornings? So I did my first sailboat race in nine years, two weeks ago. And I had a lot of fun. So we'll have to see. Um, it, uh, oh, you're back yeah. at it. You well, mean. no, this is a total. Uh, one of my old teammates um, had bought a boat and wanted to go out and put it through its paces. And so, yeah, it's, it was just one of those things where uh, we'd had a hard ride the day before. So I knew I was available. And then, um, yeah. But yeah, no, so oh, we'll see. Every, no, I, I, I so think it, hey, is enough... Judith going to be there? Oh, no, we don't sail together. At, uh... No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't sail together like... Yeah. <laughs> That's I would okay. say, no, but is she going to be at the time trial? Um, I think she is because she knows that you're going to be there. So she's still recovering. She had uh, full hip replacement uh, in May. That's the only way I'm going to win. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, hip replacement. <laughs> but yeah, so she's she's coming back and, and we'll see. But yeah, she's, uh, although, um, you know, she wants to make sure that she's, she's uh, competitive and race ready when she jumps back in. So it'll probably be a big test for us to support me well that's it exactly but uh yeah she, she's willing to be bribed and i think i'll have her on the time clock so i think yeah yeah you can do good. Well. oh good oh good yeah maybe but, she should uh, give me give me some pointers on uh, it, uh but this is my first race back uh i did do a, a crit two years ago when before everything shut down um was it two years ago yeah it must have been two years ago before 2019 um and uh, I was surprised that I survived 20 minutes. And that's when you go out for crit uh, training, that's like the first, <laughs> that's your first, um, I guess, uh, milestone is being able to handle uh, at least your first 20 minutes of staying in the pack. And then, wow, then you can build on that. <laughs> they, so I'm, I'm sure you're aware, although they, I don't think they're having them this year, that, but the Mardi Cyclist and Machine that, that the Tuesday. Oh, I race. heard that that was on. Yeah, I and then it. that's for the for the youngsters, and actually, I guess there's been a number of interesting, uh, a bunch of pros have come and done it as well. And I mean, that's I think the record is the Garno team averaging 50 kilometers an hour for 50 minutes. I mean, it, uh, but yeah, it's it's a pretty amazing event, big event, and Cyclonero and the gang run that. But Wednesday nights up in Laval, north of north of Montreal. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, are the. Um, I'll affectionately say the old people's crits, but um, that would be me. <laughs> yeah, well, and I guess it's 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 what um, I think senior three and then masters um, are are the people who do the crits up there, um, and yeah, so I have a number of teammates who do those. Um, again, on my bike handling skills, I would be a little bit nervous to do a crit, and again, because it's such a big and varied pack, the last thing I'd want to do is get in someone's way. Although everyone assures me I wouldn't, um, I think you need to really you, you need a certain amount of bike skill. I've never done it. Mm. I've been on it. I've never done it. Yeah. So but, I mean, uh, they're still going on, and I mean, you know, they're fun. As you said, it's an hour of hard, of really hard work, um, and of really smart bike handling and and learning how to ride in a big pack carefully. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, I like time trialing. Um, the best worst case scenario is, you know, one or two people, you, you'll either get to pass a couple of people or a couple of people will pass you, but that's about it. I don't mind road racing. Um, you know, I have a job to do for our team when I'm in a pack. And I mean, that's fun too. A little scary sometimes when, you know, you're a big group and everyone's all around you, but uh, most definitely, you know, the stuff we do on Saturday mornings, they're meant to be fun. They're meant to be learning. They're meant to be training. And, uh, you know, that's the way we've run it. Awesome. I am so, so I am looking forward to bring, getting out there and uh, bringing my five girlfriends who are going to try. And uh, then I'm going to in uh, coerce more to come out with me at the end of August. Cause like I said, I'm going out there for a first time and then I'm going to go back and see what I can improve and then go back and test myself again. That's, 
but that's you know what competition is all about at any level um and uh we should never beat ourselves up because of it and uh it's only going to make us better and and I have uh, big goals for my 50s, I think. <laughs> Who knows? But can you give us any um, maybe last words before we uh, close it up here and, uh, and send you on our way? Well, I just say, you know, obviously we're super pleased. Where can pleased we find you? you? Where can so, we find all this? Yes. So Montreal Time Trial Association or Association Comte la Monte Montréal on Facebook is the easiest place to find us. There are 683 members. There are probably few Nigerian princes in there, but we've been mostly weeding them out. But uh, <laughs> we, we, and I'm part of that, well, actually, we have a number of people from actually all over the world now because in the winter, we do um, time trials on Zwift. Yeah, it, um, so, so yeah, so the, there's an interesting crew, but the hardcore crew are all sort of from, from this area as well. Um, it was interesting, we were on a training ride on the South Shore last week, and I think we have, if you're ever in Fredericton, we have now an owner of a couple of Wendy's there who's assured us we'll get a great deal because he got to ride on our tail for about 100K. Um, but yeah, so it's, <laughs> Facebook is the easiest place to find us. And again, it's, it's really all about just coming out and having some fun. Uh, it's totally done, run by volunteers. It's, uh, you know, again, we try to every year at the end of the year, um, any money we have left, there's a couple of charities that we support and just dump it in there kind of thing. Um, you know, there's, uh, we've been able to support the uh, Grand Défi Pierre Lavoie, the Charles the, the Bruno ride. And then I've guessed I've done the, um, the Air Canada Vacations Toronto Montreal ride. It's a two and a half day ride from Toronto to Montreal. And we've done that, well, I've done that one nine times, I guess. And that's in supporting Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto and the Montreal Children's Hospital here. So, I mean, it's, it's the group has been a really dynamic group. Um, and like I said, uh, you know, slowest in the high 20s, low 30s, fastest, not quite at uh, Del Chin levels. That was pretty impressive in uh, Wakefield at 49. Yeah, but, really? Yeah, so the record is 48.3. Yeah. And yeah, James McCauley did it in 48.3. And anything sub 20 is considered phenomenal. Um, although uh, we're doing an 18, we do both a 15 and an 18. We're doing an 18 on Saturday. So you'll get to see more of the countryside. Not kidding, but my one warning to you is <laughs> eyes like, open. I've got to because, prepare for that extra. Well, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing you need to think about is we are on the Voie Maritime or the Seaway Channel. Okay, yes. Watch for fish. Well, what happens is- they watch out for fish? Yeah, I've only hit one in all the years I've been doing it, but it's super slippery and it makes your tires really gross. Um, I'd say once a year, and it's usually, we might be past the season, but um, when the fish are jumping for, for the, like the bugs and the flies in the water, the birds grab them. So they, you know, the bird will grab a big fish and then lose it and it'll fall on the Wamata Tim. And so you have to be careful not to hit the fish. That would be my sage advice for you. Oh my God. Well, I'm not going to tell the girls about that. <laughs> yeah, I would not worry about it. The odds of that happening. You know, the odd, uh, the, like the roadkill? Well, you, you might just see an odd fish. Well, say. fish, malmot. There's a few. Yeah, but no, it's not. The, the good <laughs> news is, is that we're pretty much through shadfly season because that's. Oh my gosh. Well, thank yeah. God. Yeah, that's yeah. bad in Montreal. Oh my I mean, god! I, I I I know that you're you know very very seriously into nutrition, and I mean you can get your protein for like the week just doing that time trial. But uh... yeah. All right. Oh my gosh! Thank you, Nick, for being such an amazing guest. Thank you for our listeners for jumping on, and and if you're in Montreal, my gosh, look up Nick. Go check it out. Um, every summer. You'll be running this uh you can check it out now like i said you can join me on uh, the weekend uh, i don't know if this is going to air in time but it will so make sure you join his page and maybe participate in swift over the winter pick up That's the handbook cool. yeah there's a lot of good stuff in there it's all just mm -hmm. download the file simple as that i mean it uh yeah, we're gonna have everything on the show notes so you guys can go there and uh and check out what you want to uh, download or join Nick or follow Nick. And, but uh, thank you so much. And remember everybody to share this and write your reviews and give us some ratings, right, Nick? We uh, 
deserve to have uh, some exceptional ratings out there, uh, which drives the podcast to the top. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Nick. Thank it's you been so much. A pleasure as usual. And I look forward to seeing you. See shortly. you on the weekend. Drive carefully. <laughs>